Hello and welcome to episode 35 of the Green Bean Podcast. My name's Katie, this is Jack, and you're visiting our studio which is in Devon in the southwest of England. I'm really glad that you're here, whether you're new and it's your first time joining us or you've been with us right from the beginning, a very warm welcome to you. It's lovely to see you. Um, Yes, what are we chatting about in this episode? Um, As always, I've got a little bit of drawing to share with you, some knitting news about a new design, some sewing and a lovely walk out on Dartmoor, which is the national park close to where we live. Um, It's September as I'm recording, so things are just starting to turn to autumn and it is beautiful out there. Um, Things, uh, yeah, things are just starting, the leaves are just starting to turn brown, mushrooms are starting to come out, which I get very excited about, and it's absolutely beautiful. But before we dive into this episode, if Jack's going to allow me to um, to stay and chat, I've got a few new products and things that I'm putting out into my shop that I wanted to share with you. Things that I've been working on behind the scenes for a long time, some of them several years, um, that are finally finished and ready. So the first is um, a new tea towel design and a poster. Jack's not staying for this bit. You want to go, buddy? Okay. So first of all, I have some new tea towels and posters based on a penguin illustration that I did actually several years ago, or at least I started it several years ago, before I started podcasting even. Um, And it was in my unfinished work pile for a long time, as a lot of things often are. Um, But I decided it was time to finish that off and send it to print. And I'm so glad I did. My tea towel printers have done such an excellent job with translating the design into screen print. Um, I'm so pleased with how it came out. Um, It's on exactly the same um, cotton tea towels printed in the UK um, as my British Sheep Breeds tea towels. So if you've had one of those before, Um, It's exactly the same product, but with my penguin illustration on and the posters, I'm really pleased with how those turned out as well. So it's really nice to finish up an old project and be able to add it to my shop and send it out into the world. And also this week, I've been busy adding 10 new rubber stamp designs as well. Another thing I've been meaning to do for a long time, although these um, kind of came together a bit more spontaneously, but it's really nice. Um, There's a selection of designs that I've wanted to add to the shop for a while. Um, Fairly like, I don't want to say basic, that's that's not very nice, but um, straightforward designs, things that you could find lots of different uses for. So I did a dog face, obviously based on one particular dog. Um, Maybe there'll be more to come, we shall see. Um, A cat face, a rabbit face, um, there's a bee and some leaves which feel very seasonal and a couple of other things as well. So I'm really pleased with how those turned out too. Um, And if you want to know more about the rubber stamps actually there's an episode can't know, I can't be sure what number it is, but I'll pop the details down below. There's an episode um, a year or so ago where I went to visit the English Stamp Company. Um, They're based in Dorset. They're the people who manufacture all of my rubber stamps and I get to show you behind the scenes and some of the process of that um, if you're interested in hearing more about them. And that's it. So those are the new things that are going into my shop. I'm really excited about sharing those with you. And um, I hope you enjoy this episode. As I say, we've got drawing, knitting and sewing as usual. And of course, a lovely walk out on Dartmoor. So settle in with a hot drink and a project. And I hope you enjoy watching.
It's felt slightly strange to return to drawing as opposed to painting, which I've shared with you in the last few episodes. Um, I have been really enjoying my painting still. I've had some kind of breakthroughs with um, spending some time painting outdoors and just really getting into enjoying the process, which I've talked a little bit more about in, um, in depth over on Patreon. But I've taken a break from my various painting projects that I had on the go because I had a drawing project that I specifically wanted to bring to life, which is a design for a new ribbon. Um, if you're familiar with my shop, you might have seen my ribbon that I made out of my British Sheep Breeds scratchboard illustrations, which is one of my most popular products. Um, I think a lot of people use it to um, stitch along a cut edge of a steak or just to reinforce a button band of a cardigan. Um, but I've seen people use it in all kinds of craft projects and gift wrapping as well. So for a long time, I've wanted to add another ribbon to my range and one that is a little bit wider. Um, and so I've decided to design a new one based on woodland creatures, um, both animals and plants and fungi. And I'm really, really pleased with how this com this um, illustration is coming together. It's one of those things like sometimes illustrations might be in process for a very long time. I might spend a huge amount of time and energy planning and sketching and re-sketching and waiting for something to feel right and come together. This is one that I just sat at my desk one day bashed out a quick sketch, it was spot on and started working on it straight away. Sometimes it just comes together like magic like that and I'm really really pleased with how it's going. Um, a quick recap if you're new here and you haven't seen me work with this medium before because I do always get questions. Um, it's a medium called Scratchboard or Scraperboard which is a brand name. Um, it is a sheet of card that is coated first with a layer of fine white china clay and then a layer of black Indian ink which you scratch off with this um, stylus tool to reveal the white underneath. So it's a drawing method of making white marks on a black surface as opposed to making black marks on a white surface. And it's been a medium that I've been using for several years. Um, actually, the penguin illustration that I shared earlier um, for my new tea towels and posters, that was one of the first scratchboard pieces that I ever did. And I fell in love with the medium immediately. I love the kind of high contrast between the black and the white. I love the textured quality that you get, the kind of slightly more rough and imprecise looking lines than I get when I'm working with, for example, pen and ink, because I can be very meticulous and precise. And I quite like that Scratchboard introduces a little bit more unpredictability into the way that I work. Um, and I, it's also a really great medium for reproduction. It scans really nicely. It's easy to manipulate in Photoshop to add colors or to edit, um, again, because of that high contrast between the black and white. So it's a really lovely medium to work with, even if it is a little tedious and time consuming. Although if I'm really honest, I am I'm a bit fond of materials that take a long time and are a bit tedious to use. So um, I think anyone who knits perhaps is familiar with feeling like that and enjoying a slightly long winded process. So I'm really pleased with how this illustration has come together. I'm uh, yeah, not far off from finishing it now. I think it's probably just a few more hours work and I'll be ready to um, to send it off to be produced into a ribbon. Obviously, there's a few things that have to happen between finishing the drawing and uh, and that happening. So I, I scan it in and do some work with it in Photoshop, um, both to neaten it up and also to turn it into the right format for the screen printers to work with. And just to make sure, um, because I'm intending it to be a repeating pattern, to make sure 
then it all lines up and it repeats as as I want it to. There might be some kind of edits and touch-ups that happen in Photoshop to make sure that that happens nicely but pretty much I'm hoping to be able to turn it into a ribbon very similar looking to the illustration as you see it right now so um yeah it's it's exciting that I'm gonna have another new thing to add to my shop hopefully this season again um I don't always like to guarantee that things are gonna be finished for example the penguins which only got finished five years after I started them so don't hold your breath I will um, let you know as and when it is ready um, but when it does I'm, I'm really excited to be able to add add another ribbon to my range I've been knitting with an uncharacteristic single project focus lately um, 
and it's been on a secret project, although it's not going to be secret for very much longer. I wasn't sure if I was going to put a, a knitting segment in this episode because I've been working on this new design and I wasn't sure if I was ready or not to share it with you. Um, as I've chatted about, out about before, I'm always a little bit worried about sharing things in public before I know when I'm going to be able to release them. Not because of feeling an external pressure, but because of the pressure I then put on myself of having shared it with people, um, feeling like there's an expectation to know when it's going to be available, when it's going to come out. Um, and actually, I'm just giving myself permission to put that to one side and share with you something that I'm working on while I'm excited about it and I am really really excited about it so without further ado let me show you um it's a little bunched up on the needles at the moment so I'm not sure how easily you're going to be able to see but it is a yoke uh currently jumper it's going to be a cardigan it's going to have um a steak which I'll cut open with mushrooms um, they're plain red at the moment. They're going to get embroidered with little white spots so that they look like um, characteristic fly agaric mushrooms. I'm very, 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 very excited about this design. I've been working on it behind the scenes for quite some time. Those, um, those of you who support me on Patreon have seen little glimpses of this design coming together. And much like Beetle Magic, I am planning to release it in both adult and children's sizes. And as I say, it's still a work in progress, so I'm not fully sure when I'm going to be able to release it yet. I'm very much hoping that it will be this year, this autumn, but um, I'm not fully certain, so please don't hold me to that. But I'm Certainly, I'm really enjoying knitting the sample. I'm really pleased with how it's coming together. So, the yarn I'm using, um, I'm knitting with the two main colours at the moment. It's um, all of the yarn is from my lovely friends at John Arban Textiles here in Devon. Um, the main yarns are their Exmoor Zwarbles, so it's a super local blend. Um, of, um, I think it's Exmoor Blueface, which is a crossbreed between Exmoor Horn and Blueface Leicester, and Swartballs, which is a naturally like black, dark brown fleece, um, which gives you this natural colour, and then this one has a little bit more of the Exmoor in to give a lighter colour. There's a third lighter colour as well, but I didn't use that in, um, in this project. Um, and in combination with that, I used a couple of shades of their Knit by Numbers, which is just a pure merino that comes in an unimaginable array of different colours. If you ever need a specific colour, they're bound to have the one. So I used the red and white from that. And the green is a little bit of Appledore, which is their newest, um, also um, a yarn based on Devon fibres. When they asked me last year to do a limited edition shade. I designed a green, obviously, called Mossy Bog, um, and they actually uh, kept that that colour and rebranded it as Spicy Pippin and included it in their permanent range of colours, which I'm really excited about. So that's this green at the bottom of the mushrooms. So it's really nice that it uses three different um, different blends from John Arban. The lovely thing is that the um, the three colours that you only need a little bit of, the red, the white and the green, are all available as mini skeins so you don't have to buy 100 grams only to use a little bit in the yoke, which I think is really nice. Um, the other thing that's really nice is that it is DK weight yarn, so it's knitting up fairly quickly after working on Beetle Magic and on the colour work vest that I made earlier this year. It is so nice to be working at a, um, a bigger gauge in a slightly heavier yarn. It feels like it's flying along really quickly. So I'm having a great time working on this. And at the moment, 
doing reasonably well knitting colour work whilst talking to the camera. I'm always slightly worried that um, I'll get carried away and then I'll go back and look at my knitting later and think, oh, I don't know about that. That's not what it's meant to look like. But so far, I'm just doing um, lice stitch. So it's mostly main colour with occasional, just a single stitch of the contrasting colour, um, which is going to happen throughout the body of the cardigan and the sleeves. So I'm well on the um, on the way to bringing this sample together. Mm, look, see, something's gone wrong. I don't have the right number of stitches. I think it's time to stop talking to the camera and figure out what's going on here. But um, yeah, as I say, this is a project I am very, very excited about. And who knows, in the next episode, I might be telling you that it is released and out in the world, but if not, I hope you'll be patient with me and look forward to it coming as and when it's ready. had a huge amount of time for sewing lately and so when I was able to make time I really wanted to pick a project that I knew would be a success, <laughs> would fit, um, not only fit in terms of fit my body but fit into my wardrobe, go with pieces that I already had and be really wearable. So I settled on another pair of these dungarees and they're actually finished already. They're um, in this amazing golden chartreuse mustard yellow colour. Um, it's a stretch corduroy so they're super comfortable and I am really 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 pleased with how they turned out. Um, I've basically not taken them off since I finished them. Um, 
I used exactly the same pattern as I did for the red dungarees and that's one that I hodgepodged together myself out of various different sewing patterns. So the bib and um, shoulder straps, both the front and the back bib, were taken from a McCall's overall dress pattern. I can't recall the name off the top of my head but I'll put the um, the details down in the box below. And the bottom half, the, um, the trousers, were taken from a like a loungewear sportswear pair of trousers which I have actually used to make pajamas from Berda which had an elasticated waistband um, and I cut them out of woven fabric and then draped these pleats at the front and you can see hopefully darts at the back and a couple of patch pockets which I added myself. Um, and then turn ups at the hem, which I um, learned how to do by watching the most recent series of The Great British Sewing Bee. I think they had them in the very first episode and quite a lot of the sewists stumbled upon it, which meant that the show went into quite a, a good amount of detail about how to do it. So I now feel quite confident in the way that I do my turn ups. Overall, I I actually don't think I could be happier with these dungarees. I am so pleased with them um, and I just wanted to talk you through some of the details but before I do I think there's a little dog who wants to come on my lap so let's see if he wants to come up. Come here, buddy. Good boy. Hello. Where are we going? No, he doesn't want to be up here. I thought he might do. So the things that I wanted to show you were the little bits of hand finishing I did on this project. The same as I did for the red dungarees actually. Um, now if you sew garments as well it's very likely that you will have come across a technique called stitch in the ditch and that's often used on waistbands where you stitch a very careful line in between, for example, a waistband and a skirt or a trouser, right on the seam line that you've already sewn. So in theory, it will be totally invisible on the front and it catches in the waistband and all of your raw edges at the back and makes a nice neat finish. I have never succeeded in doing a successful stitch in the ditch either. I go wonky with the machine and I end up with a messy looking front or I fail to catch in some of the raw edges or bits of the waistband at the back so things end up a bit flappy and exposed. More likely I'm going to do both of those things and it's going to just look a bit shonky and rubbish. So both on the red dungarees and on these new ones I decided to do that final bit of stitching across the waistband on the inside by hand and it was very slow but working that slowly means you have much more control and I'm really pleased with how neat this looks enclosing all of those raw edges along the waistband at the front and also at the back um, and it's kind of worth it like I love sewing by hand for decoration but sewing garments by hand is slow and tedious and I will only do it if feel like it's absolutely necessary. I would always rather work on the machine. There was one other bit of hand sewing that was necessary on this project and that was my buttonholes simply because there are several layers of corduroy and interfacing here at the waistband. I didn't think that my machine would be very happy about handling that. Um, it's usually a situation where I end up breaking needles and swearing quite a lot so I decided to not even try this time, cut my losses and just go straight in and do hand sewn buttonholes which again is something that takes a long time but yeah worth it to avoid the broken needles and the cursing. So I'm very pleased with how those look 
And the final finishing detail was adding one of these cheeky little labels in the back. Um, they're made by Stitch Collective and I got mine from Amy at Craft and Thrift, but I don't think Stitch Collective is operating anymore, so I'm not sure if they're still available, but I have a little stockpile because it's certainly a message that I really love adding into my handmade clothes. Just a little reminder to myself of why I started sewing. Um, and it's something that brings me such immense joy, both sewing and knitting, to be able to make make my own clothes. And I never really imagined that I would get to this point. Um, I had wanted to be able to make my own clothes for such a long time and never really imagined that I would be able to gain enough skills and confidence to really make the things that I want. I, f I figured I would get to a point where I could make things that would be acceptable to me, um, but to really make things that are better than what I might find in a shop for ready to wear and really be able to make choices about colour and style and fit that are exactly how I want to express myself and present myself to the world is so, so empowering. Um, and especially because I'm somebody with a history of struggling with disordered eating, that there's a lot of emotions around buying clothes off the rack in terms of, you know, standard sizes, which don't make sense for anybody's body, um, let alone whether you struggle with your body image or not. So to be able to make things that are precisely for me, to be able to pay less attention to standard sizes and and really make my own choices. It's so empowering and such a gift. And um, I don't know where I'm going with this waffle. I'm just celebrating the joy of having been able to imagine and visualize a garment of bright yellow corduroy dungarees that I wanted to add to my wardrobe and then be able to do it. It's, um, it's such a a source of delight and joy for me, so um, I'm happy to be able to share that with you.
Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Green Bean Podcast. I hope you've enjoyed uh, spending some time with me and Jack here and hearing a bit more about my creative projects. If you don't already and you would like to support the creation of this podcast, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Um, We have a lovely community there and I share extra episodes in between each one that goes out here on YouTube as well as short vlogs and all of those available are available to patrons without advertising um, as as my way of saying thank you for uh, for the support that they offer it wouldn't be possible for me to do this without the support I get over on Patreon so um, huge thanks to everyone who does that and if you're not able to support on Patreon you can still support the podcast by letting people know about it if you enjoy watching and you know somebody else who you think might enjoy it please do let them know and invite them along to spend some time with Katie and Jack so that's all for this episode thanks for watching and I will see you soon take care bye